Hey, Leland, uh, come on in. Hello. Hey, Wee. 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 When we talk about your grandson, oh, could, yeah. could I that's use okay. the camera? Yeah, that's okay. Could I film you? Hmm? Could I film you yeah. when we talk? Oh, thank you. I'm an artist. I'm a great fan of your grandson. And I'm an artist. I'm making um, an exhibition with interviews of people where they talk about uh, people they have loved. And I wonder if you could talk to the camera about Kurt and just state your name and that you're grandfather of Kurt and just tell a little bit about Kurt to the camera. Where are you from? Norway. Oh. Mm. So I'm kind of uh, over here and making preparation for an art exhibition in Norway. You're a Norwegian, huh? Yeah, a Norwegian. One yeah. of my best friends was a Norwegian. Was he? Yeah. Oh, from where? That's a lovely dog. I love those. That's a chi chi kuawa. Mm. That dog is a chi chi Yeah. I love those. Beautiful dog. Um, from where in Norway was your friend? Mm. From where in Norway? Well, was I don't know where it was. No. Uh, he was born and raised here in Montana. Okay. Is this uh, where, uh, is this where your grandson grew up? No. In Aberdeen is where he grew up. He grew up in Aberdeen. He did grow up some here. Did he live with you? Carlstead was that kid's name. I. Grew up with. Mm -hmm. Carl. Mm -hmm. Last name? Carlsten. Carlsten? That's a Norwegian name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his dad was uh, a real Norwegian. <laughs> he talked broken. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to make sure the I was just answering a letter from a girl mm -hmm. in Berkeley, California, when you called. Ah, another fan? Mm -hmm. well, I was getting them out for her. I got some out for you, too. Oh, thank you. Oh, photos of Kurt. This is the... Um, uh, statue downtown in uh, huh? in Aberdeen. That is the statue downtown. Yeah, that's in Aberdeen. Aberdeen. Yeah, mm -hmm. that. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. I see that. I saw it. It's yeah. lovely. Did you notice a little uh, teardrop on his eye, below his eye? Was he a sad, uh, depressed? The woman, when she made him, she done his face there, and then uh, she put it up to. To dry overnight, mm -hmm. and when she come back the next day and was looking at it to see how it fared, she noticed that little uh, chip. So she just left it there. Mm -hmm. Said he cried in the night. That is so sweet. And here he is, Kurt, with his daughter. When did you last meet your son, grandson? Huh? When did you last meet Kurt? Last meet him? Yeah. Just before he went on his last trip, just before he died. Just last. before he died? Yeah. 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 Could you um, 
tell me to the camera. Just kind of. That's what? Could you just tell me your name and tell me that and tell me that you're Kurt's grandfather yeah. and Kurt Cobain's grandfather and talk a little bit about Kurt yeah. and I can record that. Yeah, my name is Leland Cobain and I'm Kurt's grandfather. Um, him and I were pretty close, but not near as close as what my wife and Kurt were. My wife Iris was really close to him. In fact, I think I think Kurt uh, more or less thought of uh, my wife as sort of his mother. Cause they got along really good. I don't know what else to say. How was he as a youngster? Huh? How was Kurt as a youngster? He was, he was just a normal kid. I mean, they, like, he pounded on our pots and pans with a couple of sticks of wood, and we all thought he'd probably be a drummer if he was going to be anything. He could play the drums. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, when he was, uh, oh, I don't know how old he was, but uh, he was pretty young, probably maybe six, seven years old, and his, uh, uh, Mother's brother, uh, Chuck, uh, he was in a band, and uh, he uh, he took Kurt with him one time on a gig, and they let Kurt play the drums with him. Uh, he done all right, they say. Get out of there. You're gonna get a spanking. Was Kirk always a good poet? Yeah. Yeah, he was always a good kid. Was a good poet? Eh? Uh, he wrote very profound ly lyrics. Was he always a very good uh, poet? I, I never noticed him uh, that way. Uh, his aunt would probably know more about that than me. Mm -hmm. uh, they were pretty close, too. And they, she, in fact, I think she's the one that taught him to play the guitar. That's his Aunt Marie. She lives in Seattle now. She used to go around uh, playing at bars and stuff that way, uh, just uh, uh, playing her guitar and singing. And she's really good at it, too. And, uh, uh, she quit that now. She does it at uh, she does it at churches and stuff that way. Now, but she's married, and I guess they get along pretty well. When Kurt became successful, did that change him as a person? No, I didn't. Uh, if anything, it uh, it bothered him, cause he he didn't like the the notoriety. Uh, in fact, uh, just before he went on his last gig, well, uh, I was up at his house. Uh, my wife was in the hospital in Seattle there, and he come over. Him and. Uh, uh, Courtney and Francis come over there at the hospital to see her. And when he came over, he brought her a, a that base there in the middle. Mm -hmm. That was clear full of orchids. Okay. And he brought to her. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I went home with them. And I stayed all night at his house over there then. And uh, that was uh, that was the last time I seen uh, uh, Francis the next morning. She was riding a tricycle around. 
guess he's almost two years old, I guess, when Kirk died. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirk died the day after they came to the hospital? Huh? Did Kurt die the day after they visited you at the hospital? No, no, no. He went. He went to Europe first on uh, there, and then mm. come back. And was he always depressed? Oh, I never. I never noticed it. Uh, he's always upbeat with Iris and I. Mm. Uh, in fact. Uh, him and my wife used to uh, draw stuff together. He came over to the house one time, and uh, we we used to live in Aberdeen there too. And he come over to the house one time there, and he says, "Look at," he says, "Look at Grandpa." He says, "Look what I drew," and it was a picture of Mickey Mouse. And I looked at it and I said, "You never drew that." I said, "You traced it," and he got re he got re really mad. And uh, he says, uh, I did not. He says, you give me some paper. And he says, I'll show you. And so my wife got him some paper. <coughs> and he says, he said, I won't draw you Mickey Mouse because you said I traced it. But he says, I'll draw you uh, Donald Duck. And God, he just sit down there like that there. And, and he whipped it right out. He was, uh, he was six years old then. Uh, I got. Here is a drawing like that one right there. That, a woman in uh, uh, New Jersey uh, painted that. I'll give you one of these. I got two of them. Thank you. Do you have any contact with your granddaughter? Huh? Do you have any contact with your great granddaughter? I haven't. Uh, never seen her other than pictures. Oh, that's very sad. Here's the. Uh, here's that picture that he drew. Oh. Boy, and he just whittled that right out. And then he, as long as he had it, he was going there. Well. He's gotten too goofy too. There. Uh, this is a this is a watercolor that he done, and this in here is on a cover of a book. Mm-hmm. Uh, my niece uh, is a, a nurse a psychiatry I guess and she wrote a book on it and that's the on the cover of the book there's okay. a picture of Kirk this is Kirk when he was 12 13 yeah uh, he's 13 these here are all watercolors that he's done Then these in 1980. At least this one is. Oh, how old was he then? God, I don't know. Now this here. This here was a Christmas card 
that he made uh, for us. And it uh, folded like this here, see? Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was writing the inside. I didn't get the writing. Uh, So he was autistic very early. Huh? He was, he showed early very signs yeah. of being very autistic. Yeah, he was, uh, he was always a good artist. I think he could have made his living in art. Uh, I don't know if you noticed it or not on, on uh, uh, the, I guess I don't know what they call it, but uh, on uh, Francis had a for the whole month of July had a uh, pictures in a that she drew in an art gallery in Los Angeles. Uh, I just seen this here the other day. That's the address of the. Mm-hmm. That's the gallery she is exhibiting in. Yeah, and <laughs> her pictures were a lot like what Kurt, Kurt drew. Uh, goofy stuff, mm. way out things there, and boy, they were good. And they, every one of them that she had, they're sold. Anywhere from two hundred to four hundred dollars a piece. That is pretty good. Yeah. I picked that up. Did hey. Kurt live with you during his um, youth? Yeah, he did. Uh, oh, for about maybe two or three weeks at a time, about three or four times, and then he uh, he. Just before his folks divorced, well, uh, my wife and I used to go to Arizona uh, in the winter time, and we had a place down there. And uh, uh, Kurt, his dad, put Kurt on the plane to uh, there, and then uh, he he come down down there, and then I picked him up at the air airport in Yuma, and. Uh, he had to change planes in Los Angeles, and uh, and he stayed with us just a few days. We took him around and there, and then we was driving back home, and then we we went to San Diego. Took him to the the San Diego Zoo, and uh, and then took him to uh, Sea World there in San Diego. And then we come on up to uh, uh, L.A. and we took him to Disneyland, Knoxbury Farm, and and uh, and then over to uh, the what the hell was it? The studios uh, there. Universal Studios. Universal Studios. Took him to that. Uh, uh, he's on a tram, you know, and, and there's couple of cars we was in the back car I guess and the guy has big mirrors out there so he could see what's going on and when we was going by the uh, 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 the pool where uh, the shark was well uh, Kurt was leaning out the window like that and he said over his loudspeaker, he says, better tell that little toe-headed kid to get back in there. He says that shark is liable to get him. And about that time, that shark come up out of the water there. And boy, did he ever get a good picture of that. And it's around here someplace, but I don't know where. But he got a really a good picture of it. And uh, we, as soon as we f seen, finished at uh, Universal Studios, we headed for home. And uh, gonna try and make it to Bakersfield or someplace down the line. And we was glad that uh, uh, he was glad that uh, he fell asleep, or he didn't see when we went over the pass there, uh, going out. But he didn't see that magic mountain there, 
or we'd have had to stop there. But he was he was a good kid. How did you um, did you go up to Seattle to visit him when he lived up in Seattle? I only went to Seattle because my wife had to go up there to be in the hospital. Uh, I don't. My son, uh, Kurt's dad, lives in uh, Bellingham, and I got to go through Seattle to get there. Unless I, I could go around and take a ferry and go across, but uh, I don't like to do that. I'd get lost, and uh, so I don't. I don't even go up there. And right after my wife died, I was. Didn't know what to do, so I went and took a, a trip. I went and took a train trip. I went from, uh, I caught the train in Centralia and went to Los Angeles. Then I had to change trains there. And uh, I uh, I didn't get a sleeper at going because it would just be just one night on the train to Los Angeles, but then I got a sleeper from Los Angeles to uh, 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 Florida, and uh, and then uh, then I stayed all night in Florida there, and then I caught the train the next. No, I didn't either stay all night there. I. I just transferred to train there, and I didn't get a sleeper there either because it was just one day up to New York. Then I went and I stayed at a motel, a hotel in New York, right across from Grand Central Station. And uh, uh, then the next morning I caught the train in, uh, to Toronto, Canada. Then I stayed all night in Toronto, Canada, and then I caught a train, and then I got a. I got a sleeper then, and uh, I caught a, a, the train all the way up. We got to, uh, oh, I went to Edmonton, and then at Edmonton, well, uh, I stayed there for three days. There was Kurt fans there, and... Did you meet them? Yeah, and uh, I stopped and talked to them, take them up to the hotel. And, when did your wife die? In 97. So Kirk had then been dead um, six, seven years? Yeah, he, he, you know, he died in 94, so three about years. three or four years, mm. I think, there. Yeah. How um, did he learn of Kirk's death? My wife wouldn't uh, go up to, I went up to Seattle. Uh, they sent a car down after me, and... Uh, uh, I went up there to that memorial they had for him, and uh, uh, my wife wouldn't go. Uh, she had a bad heart, and she was afraid it would shake her up too much, and so she wouldn't go, so I went. And, and, and it wasn't long after that that she died, about four years, I guess. Mm -hmm. But she's the one that started this here uh, at writing all the letters. Mm. And uh, uh, they haven't let up any. They still, there's, uh, what's surprising is that the, the, some of the letters that I'm getting now, they weren't even born yet. Probably just a gleam in their father's eye or something, you know, then. Uh, they they weren't alive yet, but they've heard his music and uh, and they tell me how it. Uh, all of them say about the same thing about his music, how it affected them and uh, how that had helped them. And uh, that, uh, all over the world, huh? All over the world. Yeah, he's an iconic person. Yeah, I uh, I even got uh, a letter from uh, Egypt of all places. I don't know. I. Threw the letter away. I, I after I uh, I get him for so long, and uh, then I I put him in a when a basket gets full. I put him in a uh, one of plastic grocery sacks, and then I tie it up. And then after I get so many of them, well, then I throw them away. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
Now, mm -hmm. this this here woman here, she's from Italy. She she hasn't written to me now in quite a while. Uh, she writes email. And this here woman here is from uh, uh, Australia. And that one up there, the blonde up there, she's from Germany. And this one here is from uh, either North or South Carolina, I forget which. And this one here is, is from uh, Brazil. I can't remember, so there's the house. That woman there with me is uh, that red-headed one. She's, I think she's from Oregon, Portland, Oregon. I can't remember all of them. Uh, I ask them to, I always ask them to send me a picture and put their age and their date, you know, and stuff on the back uh, so I can look at it when I see the picture. I was putting, I got, uh, I got about three albums full of pictures, but uh, I don't know who they are because they didn't put their names and stuff on them. Mm. And I, I, I forgot them. But my wife started this when she was alive. She used to answer all the uh, letters. And so when she died, I, I just inherited it, I guess, and I, I started doing it. Is it strange, do you think? You're a nice, ordinary person. And suddenly, part of your family is music royalty. Is that strange? That uh, that he's he's uh, world famous. Oh yeah. And coming from small Aberdeen, just ordinary nice folks, and then suddenly he become one of the greatest musicians of his times. Yeah. Is that strange? Do you think? Uh, he uh, he's made more money since he's been dead than uh, he did when he was alive. And uh, he surpassed Elvis Presley on uh, the amount of money that he's made. But, uh, part of that now was that uh, uh, Courtney sold, what was it, one, one fourth of his music or something like that f for $55 million. And she still got a bunch of it left. And so that was part of the money. Now I don't know, I don't know how Francis comes out now. Francis, uh, she just turned 18 uh, on the 18th of uh, August. If she'd waited one more day, she'd been born on my wife's birthday. My wife was on the 19th of August. Then today is the 26th, isn't it? That is correct. That's our uh, wedding anniversary today, our 66th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Uh, we was married 53 years when she died. That's a long time. Yeah, that one, that one picture of her and I standing by the car, that was taken in uh, uh, Lincoln City, Oregon. It's right on the coast. We went down there for our 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, and three years later, she died. She was the beauty. That's her up there. Corner. And that's that's my wedding picture, I guess you'd call it over there. I was in the Marine Corps when we got in married. the uniform. Yeah. You were a handsome guy, and she was a beauty. Yeah. I was uh, I was 20 years old in that picture, and uh, mm -hmm. and she was 19 or 18 in that picture there. Mm -hmm. Where did you serve in the Marine Corps? South Pacific. Ooh. Was that interesting? Yeah. It's Pee Wee. Her name's Pee Wee. Pee Wee. Pee Wee? You pester the daylight. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes. Bush How old is he? Uh, I think he's must be about a year and eight months. Uh, he was a year old uh, last 9th of January. So it's the eighth month, isn't it? So yeah. he's about a year and eight months, something like that. Lovely. And boy, is he ever my dog. <laughs> he's your best friend. Yeah. Uh, where I got him, I was over there the other day talking to the woman that raised that breeds them and god she had a she had another litter there of them and there was a little one in there black and white oh more white than black i mean black spots i god he was a pretty dog and the others uh, that one had a lot of white on him where the others they just had a little bit of white on him and then there was one that was a brown one like uh, that picture right behind you there that there it was a chihuahua and uh, uh, part chihuahua and what was it what else it was now I forget but uh, my wife painted that and that looks just exactly like him it runs uh, uh, on uh, I guess from my wife's side of the family. Although it come from my side too, but not through me. I, I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. But uh, uh, my wife's aunt, she draw, she painted that there, one on black velvet up there. And then uh, my wife above the telephone over there, she painted them uh, little pups up there. Uh, Dogs and then uh, above the, the by the door there, my wife uh, or my son painted that. Uh, Jesus, he painted it. Yeah, my son, he's uh, he's quite all right. Him and <laughs> oh, that's my phone. Hello. This is Ben. Do I take my hearing aid out? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just had a car. Huh? Yeah, what? I didn't understand what you said. Oh, in the paper in Seattle? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You're the one who wrote that article? No, 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 I didn't write it. Oh. I, just, I, I read it about five minutes ago. I gave you a call. Oh. Yeah. I got company now, so. Okay. Oh, get out. Okay. Hey, Bye. This is my dad here. That's your dad. Yeah, I got uh, my youngest son, he lives here with me. He's sort of a caregiver to me. He does very little cooking, but he does take care of the yard and stuff that way. 
He does all that. Washes my car for me once in a while. When I ask him, he didn't do about anything I ask him to do. That's better than being here alone. Although I'm like he's uh, he's uh, babysitting her now. That that's his granddaughter up there. This here little one right here. That's his new granddaughter. Marley. The other one's Whisper. And he takes care of her. Both, uh, both her mother and father both work. Uh, so uh, my son goes down there and babysits her. <laughs> He's a springy little bugger, ain't he? He can really jump. I got a deal in the mail the other day. I don't know whether I got it here or not. Uh, about uh, the Chihuahuas that they make a special chow for them because they're a finicky boy and I find that out there's lots of food that he won't eat. He'll eat this and I don't like to give him too much of it. I bring him off a little piece let him have it. So I don't give him any chocolate. My $750 buddy She's a female, but I've had her fixed, didn't I? She's very affectionate. You know, it's funny you now, I got a wheelchair, it's in my car out there, an uh, electric wheelchair, and uh, she'll bust her butt to get up in my lap to ride with me. We'd, every once in a while, it was nice weather, we'd take a run drawn through the park with it. She'd sit right there on my lap, but she won't won't jump up in the car. She won't get in the car. She, she and I lift her up, put her in the car, and and she'll shake most of the time. She's there. She eventually, uh, by the time we get back, I would go into town with her, and by the time we get back, she's not shaking anymore. But. He is a beauty. Uh, oh boy, that white one though, that there was a beauty. She's a long hair. So is the white one was long hair. But uh, now that one there was a uh, short hair. Yeah. Uh, he was a male and uh, there's a uh, uh, my youngest boy when we lived in Aberdeen there there was a little kid lived next door and my boy used to play with him sometimes and uh, uh, he came over to the house one day and, and asked my wife uh, if Gary was there no, and she said no Gary's in school he said oh he said well can I come in and she said yeah she said come in for a little while and he come in and Pee Wee, that was what that one's name was too, Pee Wee. And he was sitting on the Davenport. And he walked up to him just out of a clear blue sky. He turned around to my wife and he says, He sure got a big wiener, Ed. <laughs> she said she didn't know what to say there.
that's the only first uh, first few years we was married. Oh, uh, we lived over on the south side, and she had to catch a bus, and right at the corner of Broadway and Wishka, there in Aberdeen, there used to be a drugstore there. There's a popcorn factory there now, and uh, uh, she had to catch a bus there to go, come home on, and. Uh, uh, <laughs> She had the oldest boy, Donnie, Kurt's dad. He was with her. And they had a display of the douchebags in the window there, you know. And there's all kinds of people standing there waiting to catch a bus. And uh, uh, Donnie went to the, that's my son, Gary. And uh, uh, he went out there and he pointed at a douchebag. He says, "My wife." He said, "My mother's got one of those." <laughs> it just embarrassed her to be dead. Gary, huh? this fellow's from Norway. Oh wow! Hello, how do you do? Uh -huh. He's a Norska fiskeman. <laughs> just speak Norwegian. <laughs> Sister's husband, first husband was a Finn. He's a hell of a nice guy. I guess, I guess the second husband, Lisa. Lisa, isn't that the way you say it? What? Uh, Hazel's, Rolf, Lisa, and Hazel. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, his folks were Norwegians. Too, and I think he will need be Norwegian too. That's why you speak to every bit Norwegian. Yeah, his uh, they had uh, some kind of a I don't know a church or lodge or something Norwegian lodge here, and he was a big big wheel in it. Uh, brother said. There is some kind of name of this uh, Norwegian American organization, I can't remember. Mm. It has been very nice to visit you. Mm. I'm very grateful for you allowing me to mm. talk to you. Yeah, I had a picture like that and I took it to uh, uh, the DNR theater when we had our uh, lounge axe there and so you can see it was a big bigger one than that and uh, somebody stole it or they didn't take good care of it and it got somebody got it I don't know who but the woman sent me another one just the other day I told her I, could, I lost that one How do you feel about this um, cult of Kurt? Huh? How do you feel about this cult of Kurt? How do you feel about this cult making of Kurt? Cult? Huh? Cult making? Fans or whatever you want to call them? People that no. Worship him. Yeah, my guess. <laughs> about his music? Yeah, how do you feel about this? Um, to some people, he is like a religious figure. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Mm, I don't know. I guess I just take it in stride. <laughs> uh, there is a, a deal in Aberdeen that uh, has got a, uh, they've got a, uh, a deal, they got a uh, bunch of people, I was on it, but uh, it didn't do me no good to go to the meetings because I couldn't, when there'd be more than one person talking, well, I couldn't uh, understand what they said. Uh, 
and they got to talk right directly to me, and then I said, but I can't understand it. Uh, but they, they, they're trying to get a building, trying to get enough money to put, get a building to, to uh, buy, to uh, have a place for kids to come, and, and like the tourists uh, come to see. It's surprising how many people there really is that come here. Yeah, you get people all the And the amount of letters that I get. Oh. It gets expensive after a while. Like uh, when I send a letter to uh, Norway or England or anything like that, though, that takes uh, uh, 90 some cent stamp. Mm -hmm. And these here, I guess they just raised the rent and, or the price of them. And here now, and I think they're 40, 44 or 45 cents now that to mail a letter in the States. I'm surprised that he didn't, uh, the dog didn't go and Gary come in that he didn't bark at him and go bite at his legs. <laughs> Gary can just look at him and he'll growl. Yeah. Same with my kid, the dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 